All right. So I mentioned this on Do Dissident Show uh, just before I, I left because I had to do their Q&A. But uh, Keen asked me, hey, what stories are you talking about? And I wanted to bring up this one in particular. Hollywood's big boom has gone bust. Now, this is an article from the BBC, but there have been a lot of other content creators, especially those in the entertainment genre, people like Nerd Roddick or It's a Gundam or Star Wars Theory. A lot of people have been talking about the downfall of Hollywood. And listen, the people I hold to blame are the CEOs and the corporate powers that be. A lot of good people, a lot of good workers, those that work in the service industry, you know, makeup artists, uh, you know, you got your uh, editors, all these people, these regular working class people working in Hollywood are going to suffer because of the decisions that these uh, corporate jagoffs have done because the idea of art has died. And I know Keaton and Russell have done a phenomenal breakdown in regards to what's happening to the film industry, theater industry. And, you know, I'm probably wrong on this, but I if Hollywood is to set to implode, the final explosion, there is potential for a second renaissance in filmmaking, art, and creativity. Hollywood is where good ideas go to die. Hollywood is where all of your favorite intellectual properties become twisted and deformed. Looking at you, Disney, for what you did to Marvel, Star Wars, Doctor Who, Indiana Jones, Willow. I mean, look, I mean, Willow was one thing, but that Indiana Jones movie that came out, or you got that actress who is just ha, 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 laughing. And Indiana Jones character says to her, why are you laughing? Two of my friends have died. And she makes this stone face like, oh, sorry. Indiana Jones secret goddaughter. So let's talk about this. Let's, let's talk about what's happening in Hollywood. So Hollywood's big boom has gone bust. So let's talk about this big bust. So Michael Forden was at the heart of Hollywood's golden age of streaming. The actor and aerial, aerial, aerial cinematographer turned his hobby of flying drones into a profitable business in 2012, just as the streaming wars were taking off. What a time. For a decade, he was flying high above film sets, creating sleek aerial shots for movies and TV shows on Netflix, Amazon, and Disney. What a time. There was a boom. And now... <laughs> I made a fart noise, has gone bust. Now he's on the verge of becoming homeless again. He was evicted from the Huntington Beach home he shared with his wife and two young children and is now being booted from the Las Vegas apartment they moved to because they could no longer afford to live in Southern California. I'm sorry that's happening. We were saving to buy a house. We had money. We had done things the right way, he said. Two years ago, I didn't worry about going out to dinner with my wife and kids spending 200 bucks. Now I worry about going out and spending $5 on a value meal at McDonald's. California is going under. It is a land of pure shite. And I, I kid you not, there's, there's an app in California for those who live in San Francisco. There's an app dedicated for human feces and where they are at. I don't know what mad genius created that app or even created a system to locate human fecal matter in the streets or on the sidewalks. I don't know whether to praise you and say, my goodness, you brilliant mad lad, or number two, look at you with a raised eyebrow and said, how did you know when someone's going to take a dump? Now, look, hey, if you got to go, you got to go, but how is that done? For over a decade, business was booming in Hollywood, with studios battling to catch up to new companies like Netflix and Hulu. But the good times ground to a halt in May of 2023 when Hollywood's writers went on strike. And this is a problem, too, because, listen, it's one thing to blame the corporate overlords, but uh, listen, listen, the the writers for a lot of these um, movies and TV shows. Some of you wrote absolute crap and you think you deserve a pat on the back. All right. I'm not going to sit here and name shows. Act like <laughs> She-Hulk. <laughs> oh, boy. Excuse me. All the other movies coming out. <clears throat> Sorry. Ooh. I'm not saying that they can't write, but, you know. This is also going to pave the way for AI to take over, too. So the strikes lasted multiple months and marked the first time since the 1960s that both writers and actors joined forces, effectively shutting down Hollywood production. But rather than roaring back in the one year since the strikes ended, production has fizzled because there isn't enough money to go around. Because what the writers and strikers didn't realize is that the Hollywood execs 
They're right now trying to put out a fire of how much deep they are in the red. They're not in the black. They're not earning profit. They are deep, deep, deep in the red. Red like hot fire. Red like blood. Blood flowing so the sharks can feed. Projects have been canceled and production was cut across the city as jobs have dried up with layoffs at many studios, most recently at Paramount. It had a second round of lay. Oh God. Second round of layoffs this week as a stored movie company moves to cut 50% of its workforce ahead of a merger with the production company Skydance. Oh boy. See, these mergers aren't good things. Unemployment in film and TV in the United States was at 12.5% in August, but many think those numbers are actually much higher because many film workers either do not file for unemployment benefits because they're not eligible, or they've exhausted those benefits after months of not working. As a whole, the number of U.S. productions during the second quarter of 2024 was down about 40% compared to the same period in 2022. Globally, there was a 20% decline over that period, according to Pro uh, Prod Pro, sorry about that, which tracks TV and film productions. That means fewer new movies and binge-worthy shows for us. So that means, like, for example, going to bring up uh, a show that I had high hopes for, but now I dismiss because, man, they really screw the pooch on that one. House of the Dragon, right? So people had to wait, like, maybe a year, year and a half for that second season to come out. And they only did eight episodes, but they were supposed to do ten. Um, but they did eight. And now we got to wait another two years for the third season of House of the Dragon. Now, may maybe this is just me. May maybe it's just, maybe I'm becoming senile. But I remember when Game of Thrones, when it was still around, you know, they had the show. Oh, wait till next year. It comes out again next year. Boom. Show. Oh, wait till next year. But now we're noticing the TV show is taking two years to make, three years to make. There's a cut in work and labor. The studios can't afford what they used to do. And it also has to do with the writers, too. Yes, the writers and the directors, because they play a role. Because when you tell people this movie isn't meant for you, or this movie is meant for this one person, or how dare you interpret it, or if you don't like this movie, don't watch it. If you tell people to F off, they're not going to buy your product. And if you keep on making piss-poor quality films and TV shows, people will not tune in. You know, we live in a neoliberal nightmare. People do want to be entertained, Hollywood writers and directors. And when you, you know, take a favorite intellectual property, like let's say Marvel Comics, you know, people want to see Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America. They don't want to see Agatha. Okay? They, 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 they don't want to see that. They don't want to see some story about the Acolyte. They want to see a story about Han Solo or Luke Skywalker from Star Wars. Am I being mean? No, I'm only speaking the fact. When people go into a steak restaurant, they want a nice steak dinner. Porterhouse steak, T-bone, ribeye steak, whatever. They don't want to be served vegan tofu. Okay? And that's what a lot of these Hollywood writers are doing. They're making piss poor quality. And of course, when you have your corporate overlords, like your tycoons and CEOs giving a green light to it, they're thinking everyone's going to consume the slop because, hey, Make more product because all these Hollywood jagoffs are thinking short-term profit. They're not thinking about the art. And if you're a writer or an up-and-coming director, I'm not going to tell you not to go to Hollywood. But maybe you're better off in your own backyard doing your own production, doing your own thing. That's the truth. Hollywood is going to blow. Boom. As it should be. But experts say the streaming boom wasn't sustainable. Of course, because there's the 2020 lockdown. But wait, just because people were indoors doesn't mean they had money to spend. They were spending their credit cards. That's why we got a credit card debt crisis. And studios are trying to figure out how to be profitable in a new world when people don't pay for cable TV funded by commercials because no one wants that anymore. The air has come out of the content bubbles, said Matthew Bellini, founder of the Puck New founder of Puck News, which covers the entertainment industry. Crisis is a good word. I try not to be an alarmist, but crisis is what people are feeling. There's been a lot of people talking about this. Um, look, and I followed some of Nerd Erotic's work, and he was on point about what's happening to Hollywood. When you piss off the fandom, when you make horrible quality shows and movies, and when you have CEOs and directors that are greedy and only think about profit. Of course, it's not going to work. Of course, people are not going to be wanting to consume the slop. Part of the boom was fueled by Wall Street, where tech giants like Netflix saw record growth and studios like Paramount saw their share prices soar for adding their own streaming service offers. 
my goodness, it caused an overheating of the content market. Uh, there was 600 subscripted live action series airing just a few years ago, and then a stock market stopped rewarding that. Uh, Mr. Bellini says Netflix crashed and all other companies crashed. Netflix has since recovered, but the others are really struggling to get to profitability. Profitability, that's a key word, which means create a product or content that people will consume. Is that a bridge too far? Maybe. Maybe. M maybe so. Maybe so. Now, Eric, you bring up a good point. I'm glad I caught it. I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat, too, but also read the story, too, because I want audience feedback, too. Woke activists are symptoms. You know, private equity firms are the problem. Also, there's racist, sexist, and homophobics with guilty conscience. Look, there's, there's a lot of factors playing in in regards to the downfall of Hollywood, and there's a lot of people with a lot of ego and pride that contributed to the fuel and the boom and destruction of what we are witnessing here. Um, and I know because I, because I watched a little bit of uh, when do distance talked about the theater in New York, or is it what's happening in Hollywood? And, you know, you do have a lot of liberals who are in key positions of power. If you don't write or follow orders, what they want, you're out of a job. You're out of a job. And, you know, James O'Keefe, I can't play the video because we'll get hit with copyright, but uh, James O'Keefe. You know, did an uh, investigation piece in regards to Hollywood and how you have people of color saying to other people of color that they're not the certain shade of color correctly that they're looking for. Or either that they're not looking to hire straight white males or anything like that nature. It's like it's, a, it's an interior club where if you don't follow the line or agree with everything, mostly with the liberal establishment. Well, you're S-H-I-T out of luck. And it's and it's a bad thing. And there's a lot of nepotism in Hollywood. And a little side note, too, about Hollywood, because it's all smoke and mirrors. And I remember, I, and I brought this up on Do Dissident Show, too. I think I brought this up on the show, too, as well. My mom, she used to work as a makeup artist, designer. She did a lot of film work, video work, you know, here uh, in Chicago. And I remember saying to her once, like, I called her up. I'm like, you know, I read this tabloid. Like, hey, these a lot of Hollywood celebrities going broke. You know, they're they're going broke. And I said, Mom, how bad is it really? And she's, oh, kid, even when you were a kid, oh no, there's a lot of Hollywood celebrities that they're broke. They they just know how to put on a good act. The key word, my son, is acting. Gotta love my mom. And uh, you know, she went on to explain, like, yeah, like these Hollywood actors and celebrities, they gotta pay their team. They live in these really expensive mansions. And so a lot of them, yes, are broke. B R O K E. You know, it's, it's all a facade. It's all smoke and mirrors. I mean, look, folks, and even in the influencer realm, too. You know, remember that guy, Dan Blazarian, who had that big mansion? That wasn't his that he owned. He rented it out. It's, it's, it, oops, I hit my light there. I hit the light there. It's all a show. You're being tricked. You're being tricked, my lovelies. All right, continuing on. Let's see. Let's see what else we got here. Hold on. I want to make sure we got the rest of the audience here. What else we got here? So there you go. So, and Anna Ringwald says, yeah, Hollywood equals mainstream media. It is. Yeah. And Dan Barr, you're talking about modern gaming too. Yes. That's even happening with modern gaming. Modern gaming's going under, but Hey, at least space Marine two was good. Love that. Along with the streaming bubble bursting, some productions are also being lured away from California uh, by attractive tax incentives in other states and uh, countries. Los Angeles leaders are so concerned about the slowdown that Mayor Karen Bass created a task force last month to consider new incentives for film production in Hollywood. It's too late. I personally think there, Los Angeles mayor, there ain't nothing you could do. There ain't nothing you could do to fix it. You can't do it. The entertainment industry is critical uh, to the economic vitality uh, of the uh, Los Angeles region. Not going to happen. Bass said announcing the plan, explaining it's a it is a corner store, uh, corner store, cornerstone. Uh, stuttered there. Sorry about that. Of the city's economy and supplies hundreds of thousands of jobs. Recent data shows the entertainment industry contributes to one hundred fifteen billion annually to the region's economy with an employment base of six hundred eighty one thousand people. The mayor said, well, California is becoming so expensive. And people are moving out, which means they can't afford to live there. Uh, what does that tell you, Gavin Newsom or mayor of Los Angeles? What does that tell you? 
Things are changing. Everything changes. The era of Hollywood having control is coming to an end. Won't happen tomorrow, but soon. The writers and actors strikes lasted for months and resulted in union contracts that offer more money and protections against artificial intelligence. You cannot stop the AI. I'm sorry, folks. It's coming. Okay. It's here. Uh, Duncan Crabtree, Ireland, a chief negotiator with the Screen Actors Guild Union, told the BBC that some consolidation in Hollywood was inevitable. He says he's optimistic that production will be ramping up soon. That's not happening, man. Please. It's like saying Santa Claus is real. It ain't going to happen. What makes these companies special, what gives them their unique ability to create value is their relationship with creative talent. No, 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 no. Those companies stick their wang bone all the way up to creative talent's wazoo. Okay? Writers, directors, actors, and if you do not do what they say while they got that thing up your wazoo, well, they're going to plop you off and throw you in the trash bin. Is that a horrible way to paint that picture? Yes, it is. But this is why I'm kind of happy seeing Hollywood also implode, because it's all fake. Continuing on, Hollywood always thinks it's in a crisis, he says. It's a town that constantly faces technological uh, innovation, all kinds of change, which is part of the magic. Part of keeping content fresh is everyone having the idea that things don't always have to be the way they've been. Well, then you are not ready for Hollywood. Hollywood has always been a place where good ideas die. Mr. Fortune's drone company was operating nearly every day before the strikes. Now he's flown the drones just 22 days in the year since the strikes ended. As an actor, he often plays tough guys. He has worked just 10 days. He used to work as a background actor to get by, but the pay barely covers gas money to get uh, to Los Angeles from Las Vegas. It was a great wave and a crash, Mr. Fontaine uh, said uh, after, after a day flying his drones on the Apple TV show Platonic. His first gig was drones since April. Sorry this is happening to him. Things are coming in little by little, he says in his van before driving back to Las Vegas for a court hearing to fight his eviction order. Hollywood gave me everything, he says, but it feels like the industry has turned its backs on lots of people, not just me. I wish that things would get better, but Hollywood, Hollywood is where things go to die. And, you know, there's a great disdain for Hollywood, too, especially when it comes down to politics. I know that there are actors and directors that are for Trump, but Hollywood is that liberal sphere. And when you have that liberal sphere, when you have that liberal influence, you know, when, 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 when you have that liberal influence around, people get sick of it. People get tired of it. Case in point here. Okay. You might know this guy's name is Batista. Former WWE wrestler, actor. Going all in for Kamala because Hollywood's all in with the Democrats. Because Hollywood definitely made a lot of content, you know, helping contribute to Trump derangement syndrome creating characters that are quasi-Trump-like. Brilliant move, Hollywood. Keep on coming at us with these big brain ideas. I headed down to my local county office here in Tampa, Florida. I'm going to the supervisor uh, of the elections office. This is too early for early voting, right? Yeah. I mean, those right here are under privacy rules. Oh, really? You can fill it out here. That's what you want to do. Send it at home. Okay, I'll just do it here then. Yeah, okay. This election is too important to just sit by and not vote. You got to get out. You got to vote. It's two ways to vote. You vote in person. You can vote by mail and ballot. I thought uh, early voting didn't start till October. Um, that one, yeah. So it'll be basically early voting if we go to the sites, but this is this yeah, is like a vote by mail. Okay, just do it here and it's all done. Yeah. I really recommend that people go out and and vote early. You're welcome. Voting today. Day. Be less chaos, less lines. It took me literally 20 minutes to go out and vote. So encouraging people to go out and vote early if you can, but if nothing else, just vote. And you we're getting that hit over our heads so much. You know, I, I do my sense of laughter is rising up because these are the same people in Hollywood that told us we have to stop Trump. We have to do this. You have to like our product. If you don't like our product, you're this, that, and the other. And, uh, if you haven't learned the hard way yet, Hollywood, then you're going to. Because next year doesn't look so good. You know, everybody's talking about you guys hemorrhaging people, laying off people. I mean, Paramount Studios, laying off second wave of layoffs. Disney, deep in the red. I mean, hell, they Thanos the Willow series off their streaming platform. They're trying to scrub that free off their platform. 
They spent Disney spent two hundred as it counts right now, and the number could be higher. But at least according to some reports, two hundred thirty million dollars on the Acolyte series, and it was so abysmal that they had to cancel it. And Disney's right now in a full blown panic. Marvel movies, the only what these one that came out so far was what Wolverine and Deadpool. And why? Because it gave the fans what they wanted, not uh, jabroni characters. There is an implosion happening. And dare I say, it could be an explosion. Implosion, explosion, hey, of Hollywood. You know, if you are somebody who sees greener pastures, California, Los Angeles, Hollywood is no longer the golden playground. It was always a cesspool. It was always a disgusting area in which the most vile people abuse so many other people. We don't know the full stories of how many people were hurt or died or had everything lost before them and so much worse in the decades that Hollywood's been around. But it's the fall is coming. And there I say it, maybe it's time for a second renaissance in creativity. How do you feel about Hollywood? Type one for, eh, I think Hollywood will recover. That's going to be an honest kind of question. Yeah, I think Hollywood will recover. May not get fully back on its feet, but it'll recover. A type two, nah, Hollywood's done.